Hey guys, it's G2 Technology and I left you off right where we were about to handle when the command smite is executed. This plugin will show you guys how to smite a player with lightning or the location you're staring at with lightning. We'll be handling um, block locations, player locations, casting of variables, and um, world events. So, uh, if you're just starting off here, Go ahead and click in the video responses, episode one. All right, so let's get started. Right now we said if the command smite, regardless of its capitalization or not, if the command that is entered is smite, regardless of its capitalization, then do the following. So as I said earlier, the arguments are just the different parts of the command. So if we said smite geek playa, geek playa would be argument number zero. If you said smite geek player nether, so in the world nether, it would be uh, the, the word nether would be argument one. So we're going to say if there aren't any arguments, so if args.length equals zero with two equal signs, because if we just do one, it, it, it would indicate that we're trying to actually change the length of it. So uh, if args.length equals zero with two equal signs, opening curly bracket. So if there aren't any parts to this command, if it's just saying smite and not smite geek player or anything, we're gonna say we're gonna get the location of where he is staring at. So we're gonna say block target block equal so the targeted block, the one that he's staring at, the one that we want to hit with lightning. Get server dot get player um, hmm. let's say, don't do that, do player dot get target block null 50. All right, so you're wondering, what does null and 50 mean? So what that means is null uh, means that we're not going to include the air blocks. The air blocks are transparent. If we didn't do that, then it would actually be he'd be striking himself because the air block would would be counted. So, like, imagine if all the air blocks were dirt, and we were trying to get the location of where he was staring at, it would end up just striking himself because he can't see past that dirt. So, by setting this to null, the air blocks are transparent and they don't uh, they aren't included in the blocks that he's looking at. And fifty is the range, uh, I believe. Cranking this up too high can actually do damage, or it can cause your server to have to, too much load on it. So I'm just going to set it to 50. So 50 blocks. Go and import block if you need to. Again, this is the block that he's looking at. All right. So now we're going to actually get the location of that block. So we're going to say location, location equals target block dot get location. So now we have. Uh, gotten the location of that targeted block. So go ahead and import location if you need to. Make sure you're importing it from bucket, not Java. And we're going to strike that area with lightning. So world, which we stated earlier, which is just the player's world, dot strike lightning, parentheses, location. There you go. Simple as that. Uh, so that's just what's going to be hand that's how it's going to be handled if there aren't any arguments to the command. We're just going to strike the location that he's staring at, and that's these three lines. Just get the location and strike it. Now, let's say you want to give a little bit more oomph to this lightning. You can actually create an explosion at that location. So just for the heck of it, let's say world dot create explosion location, and we'll set the damage radius to about two. So there we go. So where that lightning is striking, it'll also at the same exact moment create an explosion. So it's some pretty powerful lightning. So there we go. Also, I think in real life, lightning also leaves a little bit of an indent in the ground, but don't count me on that. All right. So if args length equals zero, so if there aren't any arguments, just strike the location where he is looking, and also create an explosion there at the same exact moment. So now let's say if there are arguments. So else space if args.length is equal to 1. If there's one argument in this command, and that let, we'll let this be the player's, the player will be that uh, argument. So slash might, 
slash smite geek player. Geek player would be argument zero. Okay, so if player dot get server so we're getting the server of the player dot get player args uh, curly bracket or square bracket zero is not and after the parenthesis closing parentheses is not equal to null opening curly bracket so we're saying if the play if getting the server of the player that's running executing the command and we're getting the player from the argument number zero if he is online so if he's if he if he's not offline null means non-existent so if he's not non-existent so if he's not offline then do the following so again we're getting the server of the player that's executing the command we're getting a player from that server which is stated in the command as argument zero and we're saying if he is not offline so if he if the player that we're trying to hit with lightning is not offline then player target player instead of target block equals player which is again player not target player player is the person that's executing the command as we stated above so player dot get server parentheses dot get player args zero so we've created a new variable of the, of the type player and we'll call it target player and that is the player that we plan to hit with lightning so just like before we're going to get the location of them so we're going to say location location equals target player dot get location so now we've gotten the location x y and z chords of the player that we plan to hit with lightning so without further ado world dot strike lightning location just like above there we go the player's now going to get struck by lightning okay so we've handled what would happen if the player is online or isn't offline in this case which is the same thing of course but what what if the player is offline are we gonna, how are we going to notify the command sender that he is offline we're going to say else at the end of that closing curly bracket make sure it's the right one we're going to send a message we're going to say player dot send message chat color dot red plus sign uh, quotation mark error the player is offline so now and finish off with a semicolon. So now, if that player's offline, uh, the command center is going to know. Uh, let's go ahead and send him a message if the player is online and it's being and the player is being smited by lightning. So we're going to say under world dot strike lightning. We're going to say player dot send message chat color dot gray plus sign string or quotation mark smiting player. And let's go ahead and include the player's name. So smiling player space quotation mark plus sign target player dot get display name uh, parentheses. And finish that off with a semicolon. So now if he's smiting a player, it'll send him a message saying smiting player blah blah blah. And if that player happens to be offline when he's running that command, it'll tell him error that player is offline. All right. Now let's say there are too many arguments. Let's say he's saying smite uh, geek player, um, and he starts adding extra stuff to the command, but we don't know how to handle that. We don't want to handle anything more than that. We'll say else if the arguments or args.length is greater than one, opening curly bracket, press enter, player.send message chat color dot red plus sign quotation mark error too many arguments so now he knows that if he's running the command and he starts putting too much stuff in the command we'll tell him that he's putting too much stuff so we'll say error too many arguments so let's finish off this boolean with a um, result because every boolean needs to have a true or false so just add at the very end before the boolean closes return false there we go alright so we are absolutely 100 percent done we've handled what would happen if there if he's not including a player if he's not spotting a player if you just type slash smite it'll smite the location he's staring at 
if he types slash smite and then something after that, just one thing after that, then it will try and smite the player. If he just if he types slash smite something after that and then another thing, it'll tell him too many arguments. We've handled what would happen if it's disabled and enabled. Uh, we've interacted with the logger. We've casted the uh, sender to the type player. We've stated some other variables. And uh, the last thing we have to do is make our plugin.yml file, which will contain the name, description, and version of our plugin. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, in the description below will be a pastebin link, which will have the contents of the YML that you need to use. Since the YML file is space sensitive, it's important that you copy the contents of that pastebin URL. Once you've copied it, and I'll wait a little bit, go ahead and click on that link and copy the contents. All right, go back, right click your project, go to new, go to file, and file name plugin.yml. All right, now double click that, open it up in your file editor, and paste in the contents of the YML file from the paste bin. All right, so replace Geek Player with your name. Uh, you can set the description of whatever you want. Commands, uh, we, we can see that we have the smite command and the description is lightning. Save your YML file. Go to smite.java. You'll notice that there's no errors, hopefully. If you do, make sure you're imported from the right source. No typos, capitalization, all that stuff. All right, and make sure there's one extra line on your YML file. In your package explorer, right click the YML file and click refresh. All right, now let's export it and try it out. Go to File, Export, Jar File. Check off Smite from your resources to export. Make sure that's the only thing that's checked off. Uh, export Destination, save it as smite.jar in your plugins folder for your server. Press Finish. All right, launch your server. All right, we see Smite version 1.0 is now enabled. Go to Minecraft. Log in. Go to multiplayer. Localhost. All right, now type slash Smite. As you can see, beautifully enough, creates a crater and uh, lightning where you look. Pretty awesome, right? Now let's say we want to smite since there's nobody else online. We'll smite Geek Player. Also you don't have to type the full name, you can just type G-E-E-K or something because that's how Bucket works, it automatically guesses the name for you. It automatically uh, assumes. So let's just type slash geek, smite slash geek, slash smite geek. Boom, start by lightning, no explosion because I turned that off. And uh, I'm going to death. And it sent us a message saying, smiting player geek play. Let's try to smite somebody that isn't offline. Error, the player's offline. So it works beautifully. Uh, real fast, if you want to... If you want to see if the player... You, if you want to make sure the player is an operator, you can just go right here. And where it says if command dot label equals ignore case smite, you can say or or sorry and with two ampersands or whatever you say. Uh, player dot is op. There you go. If you want to see if he has a certain permission, say player dot has permission quotation uh, parentheses quotation mark your permission. There you go. Thanks for watching if this helped. If you enjoyed it, if you tried it, if it worked, please subscribe, rate, and if you had any other issues, be sure to leave it in the comments below and I'll try and help you out. Thanks for watching. Bye.